from the show. We're starting with Blur's Tender. So we're just going to... I say late night, just join. What's happened? Sorry. Hang on. What? What's that? Oh, I've got a pin a comment. Hang on. What comment am I pinning? I've got to do it again. This is Adam's joined us. Hello. I can't see the comment. Can you pin it again? <laughs> oh, Adam Spencer saying he used to debate against Sally at you. Awesome. There's a comment. Just pin that comment, Reese. Pin it. I'm trying to. Okay. Welcome to the show. Right, welcome to Awesomeness. Tasmania's joined us. Hopefully she's forgiving. Oh, oh. It hasn't hit yet. Wait a second. I'm trying to pin a comment. Hey, Jen. Still hasn't. It, it hasn't come up. Wait a sec. It's coming. You'll see. I'm just trying to pin this comment. Didn't really debate Adam. He was the best, says Sally McManus. <laughs> God bless our guests. Already talking to each other while I'm like doing all my nonsense. Uh, welcome to the show, obviously. Um, I'm trying. I'm still haven't. It still hasn't come up that I can pin. I'm not sure what to to do there. Okay, so what I am going to do is see if I can find our first guest. Just one second. Okay, one sec. Sally, there's now I'm looking for Albo. Wait a second. So, who do we go live with? Lots of ya. Hello, Linda. Just looking for Albo to join us. Haven't found him yet. Okay, still waiting for Albo to join. Jasper, hi. Linda, hi. Linda Reed, hello, and thanks for all your help with um, with Sally. Um, just waiting for Albo to join. So, ah, oh, Tilly's joined as well. Big shout out. Um, so, just waiting for Albo to join, and then we'll just um, we'll start our interview. So, Albo, if you just uh, join my feed, and then we'll we'll get rocking. I'm just going to check one more time. Welcome to the show. It's Super high tech. Super high tech. Absolutely. Thanks, Linda Reed. And also with Linda Reed, I always think like um, there's a great Velvet Underground song, which is uh, I'm looking for Miss Linda Lee. And from now on, I think looking for Miss Linda Reed. Like it's just a, if you know the song. Elbow's joined. Okay, awesome. Got him. Now, Elbow, now you just. Okay, there's Elbow. Okay, we've got him. Elbow. Have we got you? I'm hoping we've got you. Yes, we do. Hey, how you doing? I'm good. How are you? Good. I'm in uh, not so sunny Canberra. Indeed, I'm sure it's it's. Uh, I'm down in Melbourne, and it's um, a little bit wet here too. It's. Uh, I'm sure it's not as cold as 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 Canberra can be. Um, how cold is Canberra at the moment? Um, uh, on a sort of more meta level, how cold is that place? It's not too bad, actually. It uh, it uh, was pretty cold this morning, early though. So uh, we'll wait and see what's coming. It's supposed to hit the minus levels, I think, on the weekend. They're expecting snow. Of course. Well, as a as a, a chap who grew up in Canberra, and that's my actual hometown. I remember when swimming pools would freeze over and that wasn't just in political terms. That was literally swimming pools would freeze <laughs> over. Um, so you're, you're, you're holding up in Canberra. How's um, the fact that uh, parliament's not sitting? Is that, what's that like? Well, it's um, unusual being in parliament house when it's so quiet at the moment. Uh, there's uh, a whole lot of people are, are working from home in, including uh, from my office and it's just it's just an unusual time now 
we would have uh, normally been preparing for, for budgets and budget replies, but that isn't happening. And uh, I think Parliament should be sitting uh, much more regularly. We're on uh, from May 12 to 14. Uh, and uh, I just think it's pretty important that uh, we expect uh, teachers to be teaching and we expect cleaners and supermarket workers, uh, let alone those in the health sector in particular, nurses and the, the real heroes are people in the, uh, in the health sector at the moment. Uh, but uh, people who are delivering things with uh, trucks, people who are delivering people with uh, trains and buses, uh, I think uh, politicians should be sitting in parliament at the moment as well. So as far as um, what's going on, um, obviously there's been a lot of, um, uh, you know, the nation's really had to come together at this time. And there's, um, there's, there's uh, a certain amount of agreement. There's a certain, a certain amount of disagreement. What are some of the things that you think the government have, have done um, well and things you think that the government have not done so well? Well, I, I think they've... Uh... Listen to, listen to experts are good things. So whether it be the, uh, the, the medical experts in particular, uh, but the fact they've been prepared to uh, engage with state and territory leaders, uh, regardless of their political persuasions, is also a good thing. Um, people don't want conflict for conflict's sake. People want solutions rather than arguments. So that's been important. Uh, the fact they've been prepared to change their mind. You've got Sally McManus, my friend, uh, on your program tonight. And yep. uh, the trade union movement, along with business and labour, of course, argued uh, very strongly for uh, the need for wage subsidies so that employers keep a relationship with employees. Uh, that's a good thing, that they were prepared to change their mind. And uh, But, frankly, if they had a... Uh, made that decision in the beginning, then what they did, uh, and we found this out through the, the Senate committee process that's been established, is that when they established JobSeeker at double the normal new start rate and hadn't done anything about wage subsidies, it really sent a message to employers that the only safety net was to make people unemployed and they'd get this uh, $750 a week, uh, the, or the the doubling of the, the increase. The five fifty, yeah, yeah. Before the um, the fifteen hundred dollar a fortnight uh, payment came in, so what we saw was a, a massive number of people, one hundred and sixty thousand people, uh, joined Centrelink queues pretty quickly, and the fact that only three percent of the government's uh, stimulus of expenditure has gone out the door as of uh, the beginning of this week also indicates uh, that whilst many of the measures are very good, they're delayed. Uh, job mm. seeker has just started to come through now. Uh, many businesses are really struggling to just pay their bills, even though some of it's backdated when it will come through. Um, they need cash at the moment in order to pay their rent and keep their doors open. How hard is it, um, as, as an opposition leader, particularly in this time, in a time of crisis, how hard is it to actually hold the government to account? Well, look, we, we're doing our best to do that. We have established this Senate committee. That's one of the reasons why Parliament should be meeting. Uh, but we're, we're also trying to be constructive. We're not just saying, uh, you know, that's bad. Uh, and uh, engaging in, in politics as, as usual, because... Mm. I think it, it, it's very important that uh, we find common ground and, and people want common ground. This is a, this is a threat to everybody. And uh, I think the, the way that uh, the union movement and business have changed uh, some of uh, the way that discussions taken place. Um, the fact is this, um, the most unionised industries are the ones that have been keeping the country going. So the shop assistance union with uh, supermarket workers, nurses are very much a unionised profession, transport workers, public transport workers, teachers. Uh, and so 
the government was faced, I think, with having to engage with the union movement. And, and that's a good thing. And there hasn't been a single example of opportunism from any union or even any group of workers in a single workplace. Uh, they have put themselves at risk. Uh, they're doing the hard yards. And that's why it's really important as we emerge from this crisis that that be acknowledged and that uh, we actually provide support to those people who've supported us. Uh, as a nation during this time. So we need to talk about security at work. We need to talk about uh, why casualisation of employment uh, hasn't really been a, a, a terrific thing, as has been shown during this period. We need to talk about sectors such as yours, the arts and entertainment industry, have been left out of uh, the packages which are there. So we'll continue to fight the fight over those issues. Uh, we have a, a, a weekly meeting uh, with uh, the Prime Minister and, and his leadership team and my leadership and how, team. How do those meetings, how do they actually play out? Are they actually, are they, um, you know, because I mean, Scott Morrison, uh, you know, said that this is the death of ideology, which I just sort of, I put that, I put that to, to, to one side slightly. How are those actual meetings? Um, I know that you weren't allowed allowed in the national cabinet um so how are those meetings and do they listen you know to labor look they, uh, they, and when i say when i say to labor i also mean the fact that um labor represent you know a, a huge part of this nation you know with with their constituents sure. well look they listen to us when it came to wage subsidies uh they listen to us when it came to extending uh job seeker to ab study and uh, youth allowance, I study recipients, so to young people, that was a good thing. Um, but in other areas, frankly, it's been a bit unsatisfactory. Uh, mm. Last Thursday night, uh, we asked the question, was there going to be any changes to the JobKeeper provisions? We were told, oh, no. Uh, and then Friday, uh, after five o'clock, uh, mm. they announced some changes which impacted on the university sector. We regarded that as not really in the spirit of uh, talking issues through. And on a range of other issues, uh, we haven't really got uh, concrete answers. Um, Tony Burke, as of uh, now, he's our, our manager of business in the House of Representatives. He still hasn't had a conversation with Christian Porter, who right. is the government leader, about how parliament will operate. And we're back in a couple of weeks. There's been mm. no discussion, no collaboration. And the fact is they need us uh, because of the nature of the current parliament. We have been uh, cooperative. We've said where there are differences. Like we think the casual employees should have benefited uh, from support at this time as well. We think people in the arts and entertainment industry, we think visa holders uh, who are currently uh, destitute. Um, I, uh, I, I, helped out on Easter Sunday at, with Bill Cruz Exodus Foundation in Ashfield. And we had uh, people, some of whom I've, uh, I've uh, helped before as a volunteer there, um, the homeless, uh, people who, who are on the margins of society. But something that I haven't seen before is uh, overseas students, uh, a lot of students, particularly from Nepal, uh, who live around Ashfield, who were basically queuing up to get a meal. They have no income. They have no support whatsoever. And uh, we can do much better than that, I think, as a society in looking after people. So, Albo, so like uh, to, to really sort of dig a little bit deeper into this, because um, I think that this, um, that COVID-19 is going to be probably one of the, I mean, I think it'll be the most defining kind of moment in all of our lives, certainly in our generation, um, for, for heading towards the future, what's the Australia? Because I also think that there's an opportunity at the moment in that I think that certainly uh, Medicare will never be questioned again, that our nurses and teachers yep. will be respected forever. Um, I think that Australians have realised that they like each other, like ultimately, and, and care about society, you know, rather than the nonsense. We're not seeing any kind of sure. right-wing crazy stuff. We're not seeing like fascism. We're not seeing nut jobs. 
what we're seeing is people looking after each other and caring about each other. So my question about, it's about what is the future of Australia and how do we rebuild this nation? Can we get manufacturing happening, happening again? Can we get infrastructure happening again? What's our future? Can we be more than just a mining pit? Well, I, th I think it is an opportunity for us to build on some of the things that I don't think we've learned, but we've been reminded of. There is indeed such a thing as society. Uh, this has been a time where we have relied upon each other, uh, where we recognise our interdependency, uh, that we're not just individuals. And, and that's important. It's one where one of the remarkable things is that some of those people who've really kept us going, uh, you think about cleaners, supermarket workers, they're some of the poorest paid. They've been the people who have shown how valuable and important they are. How about we recognise that in their wages and conditions in the future? How about yeah. we take the principle that's there, which is that we have listened to the science. That's why we're better than uh, some of the uh, international examples we can think of, <laughs> uh, which is, uh, have come up with some rather wacky ideas. We've actually listened to the science. How about we listen to the science on climate change? How about we, we do that as well? And how about... Do you think, do you think, do you think that... So, sorry to interrupt. Do you think that, um, that, that, um, that climate change will come, like, when I say come back, but because there's been this giant, you know, this sort of debate where it's sort of opinion versus fact, are we going back to fact and science, do you think, as a, as a nation and as a world? Well, I, well, I hope so. I'm not sure we are as a world, but I, I, I hope so uh, because we need to. And uh, if we do that, we'll get better outcomes. And uh, just as if we uh, invest, I mean, the other thing is it'll be pretty hard for the government uh, to engage in its nonsense rhetoric about the global financial crisis from this point on. Uh, yeah, they doubled the debt before the bushfires and uh, coronavirus, and now the, the debt's gone through the, through the roof and we'll, we'll be nearing a trillion dollars. Uh, you do need, at times, uh, it is the, the actions of the state, the, the government, that will get you through a crisis. And uh, that was something that wasn't recognised previously by many people in uh, the coalition government. And the gap between their rhetoric uh, beforehand and... Uh, what they've had to deal with, the practical impact of dealing with the crisis, I think will make for some interesting debates. But I don't see ideology going away. I think there will be a push for labour market deregulation. Uh, there will continue to be a push for, we've seen uh, some uh, call for uh, tax cuts um, at a time whereby you know, we are going to have to pay back indeed some of this this debt and it it, it is important that we recognize uh, during uh, this crisis that that uh, we all have uh, have hung together what shouldn't happen is that as soon as it's over uh, we go to a survival of the fittest and and let the market rip approach but you can see uh, the beginnings of laying the groundwork for that uh, from some of the usual suspects. So, Albo, just to wrap up, because I know that I know you've had a very busy day. I know that, and thank you so much for joining us. Um, but I'd like I'd like to ask you um, just two last questions. One is um, regarding infrastructure. Um, it seems to me that there's an opportunity right now, as far as um, the you know there are people that need work. Um, one, can we fix the NBN? I know that sounds like a mildly but I mean that most sincerely. Can sure. we actually fix the NBN? Um, what, if you can name one or two other infrastructure projects that you think should be started straight away, please name them. Um, and B, just to wrap up, um, what is the, the, the Australia that you would like to see in the future after this? Like what Australia would you want to see? 
Nice, simple questions to, to finish. Thank you. <laughs> so the, the, the MBN, of course, one of the things we've, we've been reminded of is how important it is. And it's not just about downloading movies. It's about upload. It's about business being able to function. It's about regional jobs. And we do need to do much better. It can't be fixed overnight, uh, but we do need to establish a 21st century fibre-based system rather than uh, last century's copper. Um, when it comes to infrastructure, I'm a big supporter of high-speed rail. Uh, that is one of the projects that we need. The other projects that we need are ones in which we can revitalise uh, Australian manufacturing, including things like aluminium production, uh, by using renewable energy. Uh, I visited uh, the Rio Tinto uh, smelter in Gladstone, in central Queensland, what they wanted to do before this crisis was to uh, have uh, solar power essentially powering that, that facility. Uh, it, uh, we have enormous opportunities in this country for, uh, to build resilience in our economy as part of the recovery. And that means we've got to build things here and the natural assets that we have uh, the sun, the wind, etc., but also the resources in things like lithium that go into every battery are absolutely critical and provide us with a, a huge opportunity going forward. I want an Australia in the future that's a fair society whereby no one is left behind and where everyone gets a chance uh, to aspire to a better future for themselves and their families, and one in which we recognise that we all need to have a natural environment that we protect and enhance and that we leave to future generations. And I think uh, the shock of this crisis, I hope, uh, leads to a much broader discussion about what sort of country uh, we need to be, and it's one in which the spirit that has really seen us through here, which isn't about government or opposition or politics or, or, or academics, it's really about the Australian people themselves who've made the decision uh, to help out their fellow Australians by, by giving things up themselves, uh, by giving up some of their, their freedoms and social interaction. And, and that's why we have been so successful. And the truth is you can't impose that with, with laws, uh, you can provide a framework for it, but it really requires cooperation and goodwill. And that's what we've seen from the Australian people. And that's Australia at, at its best. Okay, thank you so much for joining us, Alvo. And um, I know Thanks, that you've chosen mate. a... What's that? Thanks, mate. Thanks. And I know that you've chosen um, a song to outro uh, you with. <laughs> um, please, please announce the song. Well, this is a time where uh, I know that for many of us, it's been really tough, but for some of our four-legged friends, this has been absolutely the best time of <laughs> their lives because, uh, because there, are, there are dogs out there who are like, oh, please, I don't want to go on another walk. I'm over it. And uh, dogs are, are having a great time. So this is a Melbourne band, the Foves. And yep. dogs are the best people. Dedicated to my dog, Toto. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Elmo. Cheers. Love to Toto. Oh, Thanks, Toto buddy. loves you, mate. you got to drop <laughs> around. I know. <laughs> Thanks, man. See ya. See ya. Okay, just on Elmo's song here for a bit. We're about to be joined um, by Sally McManus. Um, thanks for your patience, Sal. Um, hope you've enjoyed the interview so far. But we're just on uh, dogs are the best people. I'm just going to let you listen to the song for a sec. I'm just going to take a little... Let's get off this a sec. You can just look at the background just one minute. <laughs> Oh. 
About to be joined by Sally McManus. Just checking out. There she is. <laughs> Sal, how are you? Yeah, great. How are you? Yeah, good. We've got a little bit of just elbow song going on. Yeah, I loved it actually. It's a natural link, you know, Labour Party, I, I mean, ACTU, Labour Party, come on. <laughs> How are you going? Yeah, not bad, not bad. I mean, um, I'm living between mates places in New South Wales and tonight I'm in the Blue Mountains and it's pissing down raining here. I Can I say that I, on your show? Am I allowed to say pissing? You're allowed to say piss, fuck, shit, cunt, fuck, whatever the one. <laughs> It's like, and it's particularly when you're in the Blue Mountains, because I've got a, I like, I've got a place in Katoomba. I know we we swear a lot up there. Like you, you just do because there's a lot of mist. There's a lot of you go like, oh shit, look at that mist, and then you go like, oh fuck, look at that fire. Oh, oh you know. shit, look at that view. Yeah, exactly. Look at that view. Exactly. All that stuff. So, are you at the Blue Mountains right now? I am. Whereabouts? Are you in Cape Town Katoomba, or you? Katoomba, you're in Cape Town. Yeah. You're right near mine. Awesome. Must be. Oh, beautiful. No, it's, it's pouring down rain in Melbourne. I'm down in Melbourne at the moment. Um, so no, thank you so much for joining us, Al, just firstly. Um, just if, could you tell us what it's been like to be like, firstly, ACTU leader, right? Doing your normal stuff. And then this shit happens. <laughs> in the beginning, um, me and other union, you know, colleagues were just talking about oh no one's seen anything like this in in generations and then we tried to sort of find you know what was the year they saw something like this I guess it was World War II um, but it's different because you know it's a it's a pandemic so it's a massive health problem where you know you could really feel the anxiety of, of members of everyone um, it was pretty sort of absorbing and then the economic crisis, which really means lots of people losing jobs and lots of people losing hours, lots of people being stood down. Every day has been full on, like every single day. It's been, um, you know, traumatic for working people and that, you know, you don't choose which time you're sitting in the chair of ACTU secretary when something like this happens, you just are. And um, it's weird too, because you're dealing with, things that are really high stakes and, you know, really, really, um, you know, big impact on the population. But you're at home by yourself the whole time. So mm. I, you know, think back to, again, other colleagues, you think back, okay, big things like the waterfront dispute or ANSET collapsing or which sort of seems, seems small yeah, compared to this. But Which is extraordinary to even say that. Do you know what I mean? Like we now get to say things like that, like the fact, you know, ANSET collapsing now seems small, which... You know, for those who can't remember, it was a pretty big deal at the time. Absolutely. But we were with comrades, we were with colleagues, and mm. you'd talk about it and you'd be going to the pub and debriefing. You'd be at work every day or, or wherever you were, you know, constantly having that sort of human connection and uh, being able to, to have discussions. And it's not that we're not discussing things all the time, but Zooms are really not the same, is it? No, it's not. But but let me ask you this before we get on to some heavier questions. Have you found this just like on a personal level that um, that you've called more people that you care about, um, that you make phone calls and speak to those that you love more than you did before this? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, fuck them. <laughs> They've been too busy. They have to look after themselves. No, absolutely. So... so <laughs> So I'd love to I'd love to talk about like when when did it all get like um really serious for you? Um I think it was sort of hard like also the days sort of blur into each other too because it's been six weeks now since we um you know shut the ACTU office and everyone started working at home and so that yeah. sort of moved to that. But I think it was the moment that um you know effectively, you know, the 
Prime Minister was giving these briefings and, you know, they started shutting things. And there was a particular period of about 48 hours, I can't really remember when, maybe it was six weeks ago, five weeks ago, where essentially a whole lot of employers just got rid of people. They got rid of all their casuals, they got rid of all of their, you know, fixed term contract people. Your industry had already um, been yeah, affected. Yeah, I, was, I so, was one of them. I was yeah, one of them. Yeah. Like, it was, it was interesting. I know that, like... Um, um, we were talking about show business. I was I, on on, a, on an earlier show. I had Jude Bolton, the footballer, on, um, and we were talking about. And he described this so well, where he, like with sport and with show business, where it's um, it's not the vital organ, but it's the connective tissue. Yeah. It's one of those, you know, it's one of those areas. So like, yeah. um, yeah, like I lost my job instantly because when you're doing a theatre show you know, you can't anymore and it's over. So there goes your the goodbye career kind of stuff, you know. Yeah. Um, so uh, your industry was really the first affected and then Qantas and all the other airlines started grounding yeah. their airlines and that then you realised as you sort of saw um, what was happening with, with deaths overseas. I've got a good mate who's um, Iranian and their their curve was sort of, um, they just Terrific. lied the team over there lied for ages and he was sort of constantly on the phone to his um, family in Iran and they were all just saying people are dying in the street but our government's not telling people and I was saying to you know his brother I said oh but only but is it true that only um, old and sick people get sick and he said some of our Olympic sports stars have died but you know no one knew about that and so you know, it was sort of that point where you thought, okay, this is really, really, really serious. And so when those job losses happened, um, and then it's just been a rolling uh, situation like that, it's stabilised a little bit now. Um, and I think that there's more optimism and there's less fear about the, um, the health side of it. And I was really afraid um, or apprehensive for our healthcare workers. So all the nurses and all the or uh, well, everyone in the hospitals, from the cleaners all the way through, because you can see the statistics of um, deaths of healthcare workers overseas. And I'm just so glad, I'm so glad we dodged that bullet. So, um, <coughs> yeah, yeah, we have, but uh, I love that you did a little cough there. That was just... Reese and Sally coughing together as one, like, <laughs> separately, separately but together. <laughs> Um, so, Sal, on the on the thing of um, was you all right at the really pointy end? And we've just you've just spoken about like um, a, a personal a health part of this, but obviously the difficult part of this for everybody is both the health part of it and the economic part of it. How do we? What's the balance, and how have you coped with that? Um, your thoughts on that topic? Well, it's in, entirely. In, um intertwined, intertwined entirely. Yeah. And so it's not like the GFC or the Great Depression where, or GFC where it was these sort of unknown, um, you know, act that was happening through the markets. And of course, there was reasons for all of that. Um, you know, the way the billionaires, you know, played things that all came mm -hmm. crashing down. But it wasn't really understandable in the same way that, you know, a graph around sort of, you know, the, the, the curve and the, how rapidly the population got educated around what the actual strategy was. And so I think the, the main thing was is there, there was a point in Australia where you could really feel the absolute anxiety and it, it was probably the time where a whole lot of people were, you know, panic buying. Um, and whilst on one hand sort of people laughed at that and sort of derided it in a way, you just knew that that was a symptom of severe anxiety and, and a lot of people were playing that out in different ways. And so that was one thing and everyone being afraid of, of you know, all their friends that were older and all their friends that have got immune compromised, um, you know, systems. And then on top of that, you know, everyone's fear that they might lose their job. Like the, I think there'd be very few people in the country that didn't think that, didn't sort of go through their mind that that might be a possibility. And of course that's happened for a lot of people. Yeah, well, it's, I mean, obviously it certainly happened for, you know, I mean, me personally, but not, me personally is not the most important thing. But obviously a lot of the arts community have instantly lost, you know, and, and obviously, you know, musicians, actors, artists, um, sports people, anybody that sort of does anything that involves a crowd. I mean, pubs, you know, we, we've lost so many. And so much of that community is a kind of a gig community. Like it is yeah. a... 
you're under like a, a small contract. You're under like a, you know, if you've got the gig, you're getting paid, like, you know, like, you know, can you do the gig at the pub and play this? And you, can you do that? Where, um, where, where do, because the arts community is always slip between the cracks. Like when you could try yep. and get a, a bank loan, when you try and get anything, you know, trying to explain what you do, um, when you go, oh, no, I have 912 employers a year. I don't have one. You know, like it's, it's, it's a very gig community. How do yeah. we, I mean, as you know, like, um, let me just be a, as you know, I'm a platinum member of equity, just, just saying, yeah. because no, and that's not just like for me going like, um, uh, you know, wanking about unionism, but there's a reason for that is because I've had the luxury and the privilege to be an actor for as long as I have. And the reason you join a union is not so much for my rights per se, it's for those that have less rights than me. Yeah. That's for mine. That's the reason that you stay a union member. Yeah. But that aside, um, but this difficult land that we find ourselves in, like in the gig community, um, what's going on? Yeah. So I think that um, there's, unfortunately, because of this terrible experience that your generation of, of MIA members are going through, You've got to have something um, come out the other side that changes the situation. And, and by that, like there's other examples of other industries that aren't exactly the same, they're a, but they're a bit the same. So actually the construction industry, jobs go up, jobs go down. It's a totally different employer. You go off to another employer, you start all over again, and you don't know if you're going to get another job or, or, or what's going to happen. But that's just the nature of it if you're in that industry. And so what the, what the union's done there is they've basically got a scheme together that covers your leave entitlements and covers things like redundancy pay to, and it's like a pooling of all that money so that um, when you do find yourself in a downturn for a while, um, that they draw on that to, to survive. And so I was just thinking about this the other day and it might be um, something for, for your union to think through uh, really because probably would have never have thought, or oh, who, who could? Who could ever think that something like this yeah. would happen? You can't. No, okay, absolutely. let's happen. Let's yeah. take what's good out of it and let's build mm. something for, you know, future generation, the next generation, and say, well, yeah. why did we build this as workers? Because this happened to us during the coronavirus. Yeah, no, I, which I very much agree with. Um, like, I think that, um, and like, like, if you have any argument on this, please rip in it. But I, I think that, um, I was just speaking to Albo on this, in that I think that when we have a crisis like this, some of the things that I've noticed that is that is firstly that people have noticed how important um, our nurses are, our teachers are, our doctors are, you know, like all of our our our, our police are, like all all of our um, the people that hold society together, who and 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 particularly with nurses and um, teachers who are unionised you know, who are actually unionised, suddenly union is not a dirty word. Yeah. Like it's, it... Who's really running the show and, and doing so self, selflessly? Um, actually, mm. all those essential workers, so everyone who's not at home and isolated, are risking their health and they're risking mm. it for the rest of us. And it's been interesting talking to some people who had different views about unions and Albo mentioned it, that um, somehow that, unions would be opportunistic and that we would be stopping work here and there because we could, because had all this bargaining power. And it's just like completely misunderstands who we are, like mm. as people, as, as working class people, every single healthcare worker, um, the people in the supermarkets, uh, all of those people know that they're doing a, an important job that's keeping everyone else going, keeping the economy going or saving lives. And there's a certain pride in that. Um, and also knowing that you're doing something good for everyone. And so the thought that, you know, somehow we would be selfish, like the working people would be selfish at this time, well, we're doing exactly the opposite. And um, I think that it's true that uh, a lot of people might have different views of unions after this. And I guess even workers, like if you've thought about before, before this and you put up the term worker and what would come in people's heads, maybe it would be sort of, you know, blue collar hard hat. Well, actually, you know, our 
our whole economy is a service-based economy and it's not what your average worker is. And the respect, I think, not just in Australia, but around the world for essential workers, working class people who are actually quite low paid, nearly all of them out there saving lives and, and keeping everything going, um, I think hopefully will be something that stays with us. Let, let me ask you a, a difficult one on that because, you know, like, the, you know, the union often um, sort of when, when um, the opponents of unionism like to rip, in, rip into unionism, they, you know, they talk about, you know, thuggish stuff by the unions. Do you think um, that the union movement itself will actually, um, through this crisis that we're having, will some of the pointiest ends of that, and I'm not, I'm not sort of arguing whether no good or bad, but do you think unionism itself will actually um, become wiser through this as well? I think that um, we've always just been ourselves and we're a big, diverse movement and some of our um, movement are, are in hard hats and some of our movement are, are nurses. The average union member is, is a woman and she's a nurse. Yeah. Um, and then our opponents are always going to attack us. Like, they've stopped at the moment. Like, who knows how long that'll go, but um, yeah. they've stopped at the moment. But Yeah, I'd like, to, I'd like to speak to that in a moment, actually. Yeah. yeah, it'll be a matter of time. If it's not the government, it'll be some employers because we say things and we do things that aren't in their interests. They're in our interests. Like, you know, we ask for pay rises when they don't want to give pay rises. Like, we point yeah. out that executives are paid really high. They don't like the fact we say that companies don't pay tax. Well, we're going to keep saying all of that. So they're yeah. going to try and paint us in a way that would make, you know, other working people not trust us. And that I think that um, years and years and years of demonising uh, working people and their unions has probably been undone in the last six weeks. Do, do you think, um, are, are there many um, employers at the moment uh, I only want to touch on this very briefly, but do you think are there um, many employers at the moment who are taking advantage of the job keeper? Um, it's like saying um, I say that gently. I say that gently. Were there employers that were engaging in wage theft uh, two months ago? Yes. So unfortunately, there's some employers out there that if you just give them a chance, they will. Um, they just will. Unfortunately, that's why you need strong unions. Um, and a whole lot of silly things are happening, like. You know, some employers saying you've got to give them, you know, half the job keeper amount to get, get keep your job, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I don't think their behaviour has changed really. It's not got worse during this pandemic. It's just about the same. Um, my, my producers just put up a, a thing, jobscammer.com.au, which is a reporter, reporter company ripping off employees. I don't know. I'm not sure if you're familiar with no, that. No, it's excellent. It's excellent. Yeah, great. People should use it. Yeah. Now, so um, the fact that you just mentioned the term they, which is like, you know, when we're talking unions versus bosses thing, because one of the things that's been so quite, you know, amazing is the fact that, um, that you've been, you know, called into the tent to actually talk and discuss with the government. And I know how much work you've done. I'm not sure. Um, okay. This is in two, two parts. One, how have the government um, treated you? And two, secondly, and this isn't like a kind of wanky leading question, but are you okay with not getting credit for the work you've done? Um, if, so, do you get what I mean by that, though? I hope you really. do. <laughs> no, what, <laughs> I, <laughs> what I mean is, no, what I mean is, is, is you might not get a headline going like, selling at Manor saved the day with X, Y, Z, so much stuff of workers' rights that are just being, I think you've done incredible work, like make no mistake. But on what I'm saying is, are you okay with? So the first part of it, how do they okay. treat it? The, the truth is with that, with respect, that, that is true. Um, and secondly, am I okay with that? Yeah, I don't even think about it. I don't, it doesn't cross my mind. It's, um, it's like, you know, when you've got a job to do, you, you just focus on the job you've got to do and the jobs, you know, keeping people safe and saving jobs and saving income. Um, we're not focused yep. on trying to get ourselves in, on TV, trying to get ourselves, you know, big, you know, marketing opportunity. We're, we're just doing the hard yards. So um, however history sees that, they'll see it. Like, you know, we're not there um, playing some other game. Thanks so much for joining us, Sal. Um, no worries. Now, you, 
now you've chosen a song. Oh, no, I actually, I've got one last question. Um, and we've got to keep it kind of brief because I've got Adam Spencer coming up and also the brilliant Abby May. But yeah, um, cool. just what, but who, who, what, um, if you can, and I know it's a meta question, but what would, what would be your, um, what would be Australia in the future if you could help make that new nation? Back to 60% union membership. <laughs> you asked. There it is in the sentence. No, it's not a bad sentence. And please announce your wonderful song. Uh, my um, song is Testify by Rage Against the Machine. I really love it. Um, I'm one of those people at karaoke who can't sing but love grab grabbing the microphone and yelling this one out and uh, jumping up and down to it. Boom. Here it is. Thanks so much for joining us, Sal. Uh, bye. Thank you. Okay. Okay, this is Sally's song. I hope that interview went alright. You know what the interview thing? I thought Sally was anyway. Here's here's the song. So we're gonna be joined by Adam Spencer and Yeah, I'm hello. Here. Oh, hello. Oh. Have a look at this. Oh, oh. sun's out, guns out. Oh. oh my! What the kind of bicep is that? Oh, don't that, give me a boner. Don't, that, I don't need a boner right now. It will show up on the screen. It'll pop up. Like, don't make me do that. That's an ISO bicep, my friend. That's an ISO bicep. You sexy beast. <laughs> look at you in ISO. Really struggling. I've lost. Was 17 kilos? Yeah, because you were 412 kilos the last time I spoke. So, like, 17 is, like, since awesome. The beginning, since the beginning of Feb, I've lost. I've probably lost 20 and put on three kilos of beef. No, let's show the bicep again. Come on, because I have not seen a bigger one on you ever. Let's check that shit out. If, Come if on, this, baby. If this chat goes all right, I'll reveal the rig anyway. Rock and roll. Like, just... Um, now, our topic tonight, mm. which is, uh, you know that it's been sort of, um, it's a, a perplexing one to me. Should we download that government app, the COVID app? This is the question. So I'll, 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 I'll go back one half step. What I've, as a public mathematician, what I found beautiful about this whole process, this is the first time I've ever seen the entire community try and get their head around mathematical modelling and just looking at numbers and stats. And, and I've seen people excited that a curve is dropping away because they understand the implications of those numbers to the daily lives of people. I just That's been, like, in all seriousness... Yep. mind-blowing for me. It's been so exciting. And so to watch people arguing about whether yesterday's reduction is significant or whether you need a bit longer. But look at, look at Italy. Look at the curve over there. It's just all oh, those two different curves. Same area underneath, longer extension, lower maximum. Oh, impact on the health system. It's been just wonderful to watch. 
no, I think I think I think you've tapped into something that I like that's absolutely blown my mind about this, yeah. which is which I mentioned earlier. I think uh, uh, on this show with Albo and with Sally, but is the thing of going where um, opinion per se not that important these yep. days. Now fact, now science, now maths, now reality. Like so, actual numbers, actual numbers now matter. So on another they night, now matter. On another night, when you don't have two superstar headline guests, one of whom I beat in debating, the other one of whom I've been in AFL, but I'll let that slide. <laughs> let's let's dive let's dive deep. We'll dive deep into the maths of COVID another time. But I'll, I'll talk you through the app, okay? With my debating background, I've got four reasons why. Okay. I will. I've already signed up to the app. My kids have, and I think everyone should. Number one. You know I'm a doubter, by the way. Yep, I understand. Number one, we are talking anonymous proximity data that you have to consent to hand over. It's not GPS. It's not location. It's not identified as you. It is if your phone was for a period of time within a certain distance of another phone. So this is if it all plays out as it's meant to. It's, we're not talking GPS look up. We're talking anonymous proximity data consent. Secondly, our rights all our rights, privacy, etc., are constantly being bartered in a modern I, economy. That's the one I do not dispute. Look at our right to association and movement. We're in a country at the moment where, until a few days ago, it was basically illegal to go to the beach. If, if your loved one died, you had to pick the 10 people who could go to the funeral. If movement and association have taken that big a hit, it's only fair to ask what sort of a hit should privacy take to get us all through this? And I think what privacy is being asked to take here is infinitesimal compared to what association movement have taken. Number three, your privacy is already compromised in this realm. If you test, I don't positive, dispute that. If you test positive to COVID tomorrow, do you think they go, okay, off you go? No, they do everything they can to try and work out where were you? Did you expose anyone? What's your profile been? What was the date? And you'll, I would assume, willingly comply. Imagine what it's like being t testing positive now and people going, so seven days ago, were you there or there? How long were you? You'd be spewing. You'd want, if someone said, oh, if only it had an app that could have told you exactly where you, exactly who you'd come in contact with for more, not even where you physically were. Yep. Imagine if you had an app that told you who you've been in contact with for more than 15 minutes in less than two. You'd give your left body part for that. It's only a far more efficient digital version of a process that already exists and the more efficiently it's done, the better it is for all of us. Mm -hmm. And my fourth point would be, there's a lot of people kicking up a stink about this, some of whom I think just will rise up at anything this government does, and I can understand that. Some of whom professionally just get agitated. The only yep. people I will listen to on whether this genuinely compromises their privacy is people who, one, have never been on Facebook, two, have Fair never point. shopped online, three have never downloaded or used free hotel Wi-Fi for a not a member of Woolworths Rewards or Qantas Frequent Flyer or anything else that taps your GPS location, your spending, the other websites you go to, mm. dot, dot, dot. In a, in a community where we've given up that for access to cat videos and free porn, yep. people, people are genuinely complaining about proximity only data to stave off a potential pandemic i don't see why the argument is as fierce as it is at the moment okay i'm gonna have to be i'm gonna have to be really cruel because we've got abby may coming on live Absolutely. Like a song. And but wait, so, no, no but wait but wait but like um certainly with the facebook thing and and then we've handed over everything for free i completely agree the only bit that i still struggle with is um i want to see the i want somebody i know that i trust with the coding and it's sure. not about, I'm not full tinfoil hat on this, but I, I'm more like that they're, they're morons rather than they're doing something kind of magically, wickedly evil. Um, yeah. But will you please come on and can we properly debate this? Because we've got to get to Abby May. I've still, and I'm, I'm still prepared to, holy fuck, the rig's out. Yeah. Holy, oh, oh no, you dirty, don't, I can't, 
Adam, I told you I cannot masturbate on this show. Just, no, I've got to let you go, bro. I can't. No, like it'll cover up the screen and stuff. It'll make it all milky. Pillows. No, no, Seven I've got it. Six. Sorry, bro. It's, I'm, I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. It's just, no. Now, wait. Now we've got Abby May. We're going to Abby. Thank you, Adam. That was just disgusting. Stop it with your dirty, like, body porn. Hang on. Just trying to... Hang on. Sorry, I'm just still pressing my... Why can't I? Here we go. Abby May! Oh. Here we go. Here we go. Please, Abby May, be ready. And here we go. Yes, darling. Are you ready? Uh, hang on, hang on. I'm nearly ready. Hang on. Oh, no. No, hang no on. worry about the oh, no, Grace no. Jones in the background. If you just... Hello. Good day, doll. How are you? I'm good. We just had Adam Spencer doing some really, you know, troubling, but, you know, rather attractive work on the screen. Oh, but he... Oh, he's got a rig. He's got a rig. I know. Like, I'm like... Like, my... Like, do you see the guns? Like, I'm just like... My... John, bit of meat was something else. I mean, I've been in isolation alone with a cat for seven weeks, so I'm basically ready to fuck a brick, but he's hot. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Now, um, Abby May, would you please take us out? Cause you, and you've got about four or five, we'll see how many minutes, but just oh. it's over to you. I'm leaving oh. the screen. It's up to you. Ladies and gentlemen, Abby May. time keep going just don't oh, stop grid. just keep yeah. going it's no, awesome like it's it. awesome we've got like i don't know 30 seconds just keep going all right if we're like, going to awesome. get out of the first we'll show it in till i reach your pony's head what does that even mean abby may ladies and gentlemen abby may 
Check what? every single record she, like go to iTunes and check Abby May, A-double-B-E May. Keep playing, yeah. sister, go. Until we get cut off, we'll get cut off soon. We're gonna get cut off. You done? I just do whatever I want.